poverty is really a major challenge in the United Kingdom and that not nearly enough is currently being done to address the challenges. On the other side, what I found in my discussions with ministers is basically a state of denial. And a very, very important story that you may follow. This is Philip Austin, who is the UN rapporteur. You, you're probably saying to yourself, I know who that is. That's the guy that went into the UK and made a report about the UK government and what they were doing with regards austerity. This headline was in The Independent and the uh, headline said, I proved that austerity destroys lives and all the government have done is try to discredit me. This is a very important story because last year, in 2018, according to this article, he investigated the harsh realities of poverty in the UK. In one of the world's richest countries, I found 14 million people living in poverty, rising infant mortality rates, falling life expectancy for some groups, food banks springing up everywhere, rising homelessness, and overloaded and struggling schools and police services. Most of these problems are a direct result of government policies. But in its response to my final report as UN Special Rapporteur, published last month, which would have been in June of 2019, the government had refused to take these findings seriously. Instead, preferring a defensive approach that sidesteps all of the real issues. This week, the UN and other governments will have the chance to discuss the report directly when it is presented to the UN Human Rights Council. The government's response so far has consisted of three strategies. The first is denial. The report is barely believable, they say. In other words, it's a load of rubbish. A pity, then, that a senior official at the DWP told a House of Commons committee that the report was factually correct and in terms of austerity, cuts to local government funding in terms of the reliance that we have on the labour market and the risk we face if there is a recession. The report made really good points that we have to take on board and we should take on board. The report relies on the government's own danger and that of some of the UK's most reputable institutions. These findings should not be controversial and the government should be addressing them instead of trying to muddy established fact. The second strategy is distraction. Rather than acknowledge the extent of the poverty, inequality, unaffordable housing or hunger, the government pointed to a UN report that supposedly shows the UK is one of the happiest places in the world to live. Aside from the fact that it's not a UN report, but a report to the UN that actually lists the UK as 15th in the world, acknowledging that many people in the UK are happy and that employment levels are at a record high, does not refute the fact that too many are facing severe hardship. The government claims that it has increased the generosity of benefits in recent years and takes credit for small tweaks to its own harsh policies. But this is blatant mischaracterization of decisions to massively reduce public spending and systematically erode the value of benefits for those needing support. Third, attack the messenger. The government claimed the report was insufficiently researched based on a tiny period of time spent here, but it knows that my team and I spent months preparing for this visit, reviewing countless existing reports, making more than 100 advanced consultations, and reviewing more than 300 submissions. And although the report is based on more than the standard 12-day country visit, I spent that time meeting with people in poverty, 
prominent researchers and frontline staff at food banks and advice centres, many of whom said they wished the government would do the same. What is most puzzling is the why the government is so defensive. Starting in 2010, it pursued a radical re-engineering of the welfare state, making poverty and its related outcomes foreseeable. If the government is honest, it should own up the consequences and say yes, poverty is rising, inequality has increased, economic and social insecurity are rampant and children are going hungry. But this is the price of trimming the budget and incentivizing work. Instead, it is denying the predictable efforts of its own policies. If there is any good news, then it is that these policies could still be reversed with huge savings in terms of economic and social trauma and much greater productivity in the future. This should be a time for a frank reckoning and a change of direction. All that is needed is a vision to make all Britons, not just the wealthy, better off and to commit to minimum levels of social justice for all. Philip Olmston is the UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights. So that, even though that article was a year ago, it is still going on. And obviously the three reasons they gave to ignore the UN report um, clearly shows the Tory parties, uh, you know, Let's let's deny it, let's ignore it, and let's blame everybody else. Uh, attitude is it, still going on even now, with with all this um, corona thing going on. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you because it is a quite an important story that you probably missed, uh, and I thought it was quite appropriate that Philip Alston has defined the way that the Tories are behaving quite adequately. Anyway, have a good day and um, bye for now.